toward no in last section okay so today we are going to uh, much deeper in case of numbers uh, so we are going to find some more functionalities and work so and also we will discuss some of the use cases of numbers uh, with some of the task i will give to you so you all of guys you know need to work out this task and find out the results okay based on that so if you have any queries you can uh, directly ask your questions through the chat box okay or if you want you can unmute and speak as it is meeting right so so i just open my jupyter notebook here so i encourage all of you to do along with me okay so that you no know, if if you arise some doubts now we can uh, make this session interactive right if you find any uh, questions or any queries related to anything if you have any errors or syntax errors like you know we are doing something you know you can directly shoot your questions to the chat box right uh, then we can discuss about that issue and right then we can move along right in that manner right okay so uh, as a starting just want to import the number package so i just import the number as np here okay so uh, first i'm discuss about uh, array copy uh, there is thing called how to copy a number array okay so uh, for a sake i just create a new number array as with the, with the help of reshape function Uh, and arrange function can okay, use arrange function okay so i just use an arrange function and with the help of a reshape i create i'm going to create a two dimensional array right so if you want to print my array this is my array right so so this is a two dimensional array right i just want to check out uh, no in the last class we already discussed about this right how to create uh, how to use reshape and arrange thing right so uh today we are going to how to copy this array can you know any, uh, is there is any way to copy for example if you want to copy this array to another variable okay uh, if you know anything related to copy can you can you find we can use this right b equal to a right Uh, so what happens that we, when we initialize we, we are saying uh, that is uh, with the help of assignment operator right equal to is an assignment operator right so what happens is that uh, we assign b equal to a means uh, actually what happens is that uh, we are creating a pointer okay we are not actually this doesn't create uh, a new array what happens is that uh, there is only one array is there in memory space and we have created a new pointer called b here right if you want to print b it print the contents as same as a here right because both are pointing to same location okay so what happens is that if you change some value in b for example if you change the value for example i will change this one uh, for example instead of 4 okay instead of 4 i place it 100 okay so just change b of uh, 1 of 1 equal to 100 so if you print b right we will you know the four is changed to 100 right so what happens if you print a so when you print a again you know this change refers to a also okay so what happens is that if you are using a direct assignment operator it is just create a only a reference variable or a just create only a pointer so b is just a pointer that points to same memory location same array okay so a and b are both a pointer right so what happen if you change anything on a b it will reflects on a also okay is it clear right uh if you understood please type yes in the chat box so i just want to make it as more interactive that's why yeah okay perfect i need some more ss so that you know just for acknowledgement yes perfect so uh 
in order to avoid this no we can't use this simple assignment operator here right because it just only creates only a referential variable just a pointer only right so in order to make a, a copy of a so i just create another uh, variable c equal to if you want to make a copy of a you need to use a method called copy method a dot copy okay so what happens that it will copy in their contents as a then create a new array in the memory space and you no know, c will point to that array okay so actually the copy command actually creates a new array itself that's similar to uh, array number array a okay so if you print c again you no know, you can see this same array right but if you change any value in c for example just change back this 100 to 4 right this change back to 4 right so again if you have print again the c it will change okay but now a is still same right if you print a 100 will be there right because it creates a new copy of array a okay here we are creating a new copy of array a instead of instead of creating a pointer we are creating a new copy of the array itself and here we are pointing it okay that's the use of copy command so it is very needed right if you are doing a long some processing some statical processing right you need to create uh, a new array from that no so no you need to use this copy command right otherwise it will affect you no know, whatever changes you change for one array, uh, one variable it will affect the entire thing right because we are just creating a pointer only if you are using assignment operator right so it is very important to remember this copy thing right if you want to do create a copy you know, and do some processing over that in that manner okay so and next i just want to discuss uh, array broadcasting number broadcasting group so number broadcasting rule means that you no know, uh, that we already discussed in some case right if we can uh, directly add number arrays with that for example if you are creating a array like this right uh, for example let's create a single dimension array for example, just rename it single, okay. single dimension array of 10 values, right? So if you want to print single here, we get the value, right? So if you want to add one to a single, we can add, uh, you know, with using any scalar values, right? If you want to add four with single, right? That's four added to individual value. That is actually the broadcasting means, right? Uh, that value is broadcasted, right? Just, uh, that scalar value is added to each and every values in that uh, single dimension array right so this same broadcasting uh, rule can be applied to uh, by adding uh, two uh, number arrays also okay so for example i will create a number array mm, okay i'll just create a new number array for example for a two dimensional array. Um, so there is a single is one dimensional or we already have a single right here so this print single I just want to show you this is our single right uh, what happens if you are adding single plus four it just added and uh, getting the result but but it is not storing anything anywhere right if you want to store this one back to single no you need to do this way right single equal to single plus four right then only it will store to single right then you print it will add a four to single right that meant right so uh, i just created another uh, the uh, two time dim one dimensional array for example second dimension for example sec something like that okay then i will just create uh, okay a range of 10 also again right then we can use uh, plus lightly that is for example if you want single plus sec we can use so it will add this to this thing, right? So if you want to uh, work uh, this broadcast rule, if you want to work, no, uh, what happens that the shape must be same, okay? Uh, here, no, the shape, single dot shape, right? This is 10, right? And uh, 
sec dot shape is again 10, right? So there are two rules is there uh, for broadcasting. You must need to remember this rule, right? Uh, okay, I'll just write down the rule. So rule one. If you are uh, broadcasting two arrays, that is, we are adding two arrays together. First rule is dimension must be same. Okay, dimension must be same, or the shape of shape will be. And second rule is rule two. So we can add uh, uh, one dimension with only one dimension arrays. Okay, so uh, that is if you can't add two dimension array with one dimension array. So so both array have same dimensions. Sorry, just same right? Sorry, I just it has a shape. So dimensions must be same for both arrays. Okay, and rule two is uh, the shape of each dimension. Must be say or one, okay, and that is second rule. Okay, the dimension must be same, and the shape of, of each dimension that is here, not the shape is 10 for this dimension and this shape, 10, right? The shape of each dimension must be same or one, okay. If it is not same, it must be one in that manner, okay. So, I will create a new two arrays, uh, for example, I will create. An array called a b okay a b equal to np dot arrange right of 25 for example i just create two dimensional array so i just reshape it to five five right so it create a two dimensional array right with shape five comma five right so uh And I just create another array also. Right? PD is equal to NP dot. Uh, okay, I will remove this one for simple things. Okay, this can be just use one sole here, right? For a simple thing, okay. want to get the understand of shape. That's why I use it. So, so there is one is there. This is a one array, right? With the help of ones, we created a three dimension. This is three dimensional array, okay? I just uh, create another one. Um, okay, so there are two arrays, is there? Okay, A, B, and C, D. So, what is the shape of uh, actually A, B, and C, D? Both are three dimensional array. That is, we have. If you, to get, if you want to know the dimension, you can use ending, right? So a b dot ending will get the dimension, right? This is the three dimension. Same as c d is also three dimension, right? So can it can be broadcastable? Can it will work? A b plus c d it will work. Guys, it will work or not? Please type your answer to chat box if it works. Yes, if it is not work, no. will it work? A B plus C D. J J is false. Well, it's no. Okay. Some other opinion, guys. Okay, fine. Not working. Yeah. So we will check what is working. Yeah, it will work, right? So why have a why it is working? Because it is a, the, both A, B, and C, D are one dimension. Uh, okay, sorry. Both A, B, and C, D are three dimension array. The dimensions are same, right? Also the shape, right? The shape of each dimension must be same or one, right? Here, no. First, uh, the shape is nine, right? When compared to this array, it is one, right? So one nine, and last one is two two. Right. So either either shape of each dimension must be same or one. Right. If it is nine, one, it will work. Right. 
in this case 1 and 9 so will work right and this case 2 and 2 right both are same right so this uh, broadcast will work here right and we will get the result like this two 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 because both are one's matrix right right got the idea right so if you do like this uh, for, for example i change this to eight it will work it will not work right no? if you've done this right so here i change uh, the uh, one dimension the size of one dimension to the shape of one dimension to eight okay that is third uh, third thing right i change to eight it will not work because right the shape not a broadcast to because it's different shapes right each dimension has different values this is two and it is eight it will not work right now. okay it will work if it is same or any of the dimension is one right here yeah, it will work so i hope you got the concept right concept of dimension right uh, the broadcasting rule of time uh, this number arrays how to know how to do how to add or how to do any operation right adding multiplication or subtraction right uh, that will be broadcast to each element of number array right? to in order to work that uh, broadcasting thing right in order to work that you need to use uh, you need to follow this rule, right? All the dimensions of uh, each number array will be same, need to be same, and the shape, right? The shape of each dimension must be same or one, okay? If, if, it, if it is either one, that is, that is uh, if 9, 1, it will work, 1, 9, it will work, or it will be same in that time, okay? Uh, the Kumar, the recording will be provided. Okay, we will get the recording. Okay? Uh, it's clear, right? The role of broadcasting is clear, right? I need some more. Please type yes if you understood, or if you have any questions, we can type your questions to chat box. Okay, thank you, Ash. Uh, Anyone? I need some more SS. Okay. Clear, right? I hope you got the idea, right? Okay. So, I next I will show you how to add new axis, right? If you want, uh, for example, if you have an array. Add new axis means axis means dimension, right? Right? That means. So if you have, for example, we have an array called A B here, right? Uh, so this is A B. The A B is uh, the shape of A B is actually this uh, nine one two, right? So if you want, you can check the shape here. Right, the shape is nine one two. I will say three dimensional array. Right? So, if you want to add a new uh, axis to this, that is, if you want to make uh, this as a four dimensional array, actually, this currently is a two dimensional array. Right? If you want to make it as a four dimensional array, you need to add uh, one more axis to this. Right. So, with the help of uh, I will show you, for example, I am storing this to G, a variable G, okay? And if you want to add a new one time axis, right? So I just want to add new axis at the end of this. So the first axis, we need to, you know, a full one. And second axis, also we need to need, same as first axis is nine, right? Call and one means, we copy all the shape here, right? Then we need to add new axis here. Okay, for that you need to use np dot new axis. Okay, so it will create a new array in order to 
let it say need to use copy method also to g Okay, fine. Yeah. Then we can use this. Okay. So now we can check the shape of G. Okay, fine. Let's use the ellipses. So I will just give you another simple example. No? Uh, there is concept called ellipses very later for example just show you another simple thing this for a two dimensional array we create a two dimensional array with help of arrange so just we create a new two dimensional array here right so what will the shape of this array if you want the shape of this array is five, right? Uh, five comma five, right? This is, this is the shape, right? Five comma five, right? So in this two-dimensional array, I can't. If you want to add a new axis to make to this two-dimensional to uh, three-dimensional, we can use this. Here. We want to add new axis, right? Oh, I just forgot to type A here. That is the issue. Oh, that will work now, right? Mm -hmm. That is the issue. So if you want to, that is we are uh, getting all values of A, right? A colon, uh, that is all five and all rows, right? That is rows and columns, okay? All, we need all, all same, same as this, for, uh, that is five comma five, okay? Then uh, we create a new act. This empty dot new axis. Okay. The earlier case, now I forgot to add this a of t. That's it causes error. Okay. So we are create a copy of this new dimension array, right? Uh, uh, this entire array, and we are storing it to b. Okay. So what is the shape of b? So if you want to check, shape of b equal to five comma five comma one, right? It converted to a three dimension are here right for example we want to print b which is a three dimension array here, right so three dimension arrays i already uh, told yesterday right in this last session right uh, that is five by one here no we have five five by one arrays will be there right so this is a one five by one array this is second third fourth and fifth right in this that manner okay so that is with the help of entry dot new axis, we can add new axis, new single dimension axis. Okay, we will only add uh, new axis having uh, shape one only. Okay, so uh, we added one dimension here with shape one, right? For that, we can use entry dot new axis. Okay, so what happens is here that we are selecting all uh, rows with the help of column and all columns. Okay. Okay, then we need to add a new axis here. So this is create a new axis with the help of np dot new axis, right? Or we can use, uh, if you want, we can use directly the reshape command also, right? For example, uh, actually c equal to a dot, we can again use reshape command. Reshape comma. Comma, comma, comma one, right? Right? Then see. So we can use reshape command also 
uh, want to change to create a new dimension. If you want to use now, if we add one dimension with the help of reshape comma, right? We just add a comma after that. We can add one, right? In that manner. But with the help of input or new axis also, we can add one uh, uh, single shape dimension, right? We are adding a one time uh, additional dimension here, right? In that one. Vinay uh, asked one question, sir. Sundar sir is there, right? Uh, actually, Vinay, uh, you are not getting the video for last session? Fine. You got the under. Uh, actually, it's clear, right? What's the use of how to add new dimension or new axis, right? We can, with the help of input or new axis, we can add new axis. Also, we can uh, now we can change the shape. Also, now we can uh, create a new axis because it is useful now uh, for doing the broadcasting route, right? If there are two arrays that have a different shape, right? Need to use a reshape command or with the help of np or new axis we need to change the shape of the current array to match according to the you no know, you know if you want to add two arrays right have a different shape right we need to use the reshape command to change the shape right then you need to perform the broadcast row operation right after doing the broadcast row operation we can able to excuse the uh, 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 we can again able to reshape the uh, thing to our you know to the to back to our existing uh, array thing right in that manner we can do the performance so uh, for doing that type of operation right uh, we, uh, no i am no you need to use th these things are useful that is np dot new axis or the reshape thing and all right so there is it is clear right if it is clear if you have any uh, if you have any doubts related to you can ask Okay, yeah, we know it will be provided. Okay, uh, it is. Uh, it will take some time to provide. Oh, so uh, it's clear, right? How to create add new axis? If it's okay, I will show you next. Uh, we can move to next command, next operation. Guys, if you, if you have any doubts, you can ask through the chat box. If it is clear, please type yes. Yeah. So I need some more acknowledgement from your side. Shall I proceed, right? Uh, Ridesh asked one question, that is, uh, which is the maximum number of axes or dimensions supportable? Actually, it is n dimension. We can create n dimension array. There is no limit like that. Okay, uh, no, uh, we can create hundred dimension, hundred dimension array. That one. Okay. From the documentation, to say that we can create n dimension array. Okay, you can right. Hmm? But for uh, practical purpose, no, we need to create no uh, two dimension maximum of two ten dimensions, ten dimensions of arrays if needed. Right for a practical scenario, some cases we need a uh, more dimensional array also. Okay. So it is possible to create any di any dimension of array using numbers. Okay, so that much capability is there with numbers. So that, that's no, that's why we are using this ratio and all things. Right. So next, I show you the squeeze command. So what skills command do is that it will uh, remove all dimensions having si uh, shape one. Okay, that is to remove all dimension having shape uh, one. Okay. Here in this case, uh, we can check uh, the shape of C. Right, the C shape of C is five comma five comma one. Right, it's a three dimension, and there is one 
dimension is there with a uh, one right so if you want uh, if you apply skew solver this is this manner we can apply skews right and it will skews to two by two right it will remove this one dimension that is what uh, skews does is uh, to remove all dimensions having shape one okay so it will remove this dimension right the shape of this dimension is one right so it will remove that dimension okay so now the shape will becomes five by four sorry we are we are need to save this one right okay then to apply the shape it will come five by four right in that manner okay so if you feel for a example sake i will create a new symbol array in p dot once of you have mm, one nine comma one comma one comma one okay but it's need to cover caps right so the shape is nine one one one, right? If you apply the skews, all this one come uh, skews it, right? So all these dimensions removed, and you will get only one dimension array, right? For example, right? Then the this single dimension array, right? So to get the shape, you want nine only, right? All this, you no. Know, all these uh, dimensions are skewed, right? Is it clear, right? The functionality of skews is clear, right? If you want, I will comment, right? Remove all dimensions having one, right? That one, so the functional skews. So next, uh, I will show you one thing is called flatten. Okay, that is so flatten for for example, just create a new array here. Array equal to np dot arrange. For example, just having fifteen uh, elements. And we shape to five by three, uh, fifteen elements, right? You can use five by three, right? So this is our array. I just use print our array. This is our array, right? So the flatten means uh, it uh, converts this uh, five uh, two dimension array to one dimension array. It flatten the array, okay, to one dimension. So it convert any dimension. That is, if you want to you flatten, it converts a three dimension array to one dimension, a four dimension array to one dimension. Right? It will. You know, uh, I will show you how to do that. I just f uh, f one equal to arr dot the type of a flatten function. Right. Okay. So if you want to print f one, right? It will. It forms a single one dimension array. That is flatten. Clear? So flatten means it will convert all any dimension array to one dimension array. Right? So uh, there is another method is also there for for the same purpose. That is uh, Ravel. Let me show you that one also. That is Ravel, okay, and it also do the same kind of thing as Flatten did, right? Uh, for example, uh, just create another array here. Okay, we can use same array. We have array, right? This is two-dimensional, right? So we can that same array we can pass to Ravel also, right? We uh, should. Right. 
So Ravel and Flatland both do the same thing, but there is a slight difference is that the difference is that in Flatland it creates a new array. Okay, it creates a new array. Actually, Ravel, it, it, there is no new array is creating. Okay, we are not, if uh, IR dot Ravel means, right, uh, actually we are uh, the same uh, memory space is using, we are creating a new pointer R1 only. Okay, but it will show the dimension as a one dimension array. All elements will be there and it is shown as a one dimension array, right? If you change any values, for example, I will change one value here, R1 equal to R1 of uh, zero, for example, here, R1 of zero equal to 100, right? So again, if you want to print R1, that is first element is changed to 100, right? If you want to print ARR, the first value of AR are also changed to 100, right? In R1, what happens is that uh, it, there is no new arrays creating, already it is just you know, uh, redo, uh, removing all dimension, right? In, in case of memory, you no, know, there is no operations uh, doing, right? Just changing the dimension only. Dimension attribute is only changing, right? All the values in the memory will be same, right? So if you do any operation over this Ravel array, it will affect your parent array also. Okay, but in flatten, it is not like that. It creates a new uh, new array, new one dimension array in the memory itself. Okay, so in this case, if you want to change some value in F1, for example, change the same as F1 equal to 100 here, right? Then it will affect the F1 array, right? Uh, but it will not affect the air, for example. I mean, in this case, uh, AR are also uh, 100, right? So I just change uh, F1 of 5, right? F1 of 5 to 100. Okay, so it's F1 of 5 is 100, right? So if you want to print AR, right? The 5 is still there, right? So it will not, that is uh, here my F1 and if uh, here with the help of flatter, uh, we're creating a new array from in, inside the memory, okay. To point that new array, we are using a pointer of one, okay. This new array is one dimension array, okay. But in Ravel, we are not creating a new array, okay. Uh, we are just changing the dimension of that thing, right. Uh, and now we are pointing it to a new variable, okay. That is R1, okay. If you change any uh, values over the Ra uh, Ravel array, right, that is R1 it will affect your parent array also, okay? That's the difference, that's the actual difference. So, Ravel is very fast if you're doing any computation operation because it is fast because now it is not using any memory, right? So, it, it's very fast when compared to uh, Flatten. So, that is the difference between Flatten and Ravel. But the purpose, no, it's about doing the uh, same purpose, right? Okay, Ritesh asks, uh, okay, uh, please advise any application use case of SKUs. Actually, you know, what we are doing is, in this, what, what we are studying is that there are, we are studying different functionality, like Ravel, Flatten, SKUs, you know, uh, new axis, right? So every, every of these operations or every of these functions are needed for doing some statistical or mathematical operation over your array, okay? For example, if you have two uh, large array, for example, if you have two 10 dimension array, is there okay if you want to add some uh, if you want to add these two and uh, 10 dimension array right so or if you have a eight dim one one array is on eight dimension and other array is 10 dimension so you know to you need to make that eight dimension array to 10 dimension array in order to add these two array right so for that purpose uh, we need to uh, uh, use reshape or uh, we need to add new accesses right then after doing operation, now we need to, some cases we need to remove this uh, single axis. That, uh, for example, if many cases we don't need that uh, new axis having the shape value one, right? So we need to remove many uh, one, you no, know, to make you know, uh, that uh, to the needed uh, dimension, okay? Because the one doesn't carry any value, any information, okay? So that, you no, know, there are, if you are processing a data, there will be a lot of, uh, dimensions will be there having value one okay 
Uh, so we need to need to remove those stamps because that one doesn't carry any value for you uh, for your statistical operation. Okay, so we need to remove that all once now. So that we need to use queues. So, okay, uh, and this flatten everything now. Uh, all this based on the context. Based on you know, we are doing some operation over number. In some cases, we need to use flatten uh, the array for doing some operation. Right after doing operation, we need to return back to shape. In that things you now basing on the context actually what we need to do okay this uh, act okay i hope you got the idea okay so what we are doing here you now we are just in, uh, introducing you this kind of things and it will be helpful for you know, in your future uh, data science projects okay so we are just touching the basics here you know, uh, for the understanding purpose you now you need to work this through right if you're doing a data science project you need to use this thing as an application thing right Okay, up to this clear, right, guys? So I just show you one of uh, use case examples so that you can perform. For example, okay. So this is one task for all of you. Can you see this metrics, right? So you have to create this kind of metrics using number array, right? The first task is to create this matrix. That's the first question, right? To create this matrix like this, right? Then we need to extract third row. And second question is you want to extract, need the third row need to be extracted, okay? That is, you need to extract this 2, 12, 22, 32, 42, 52. This row need to extract, right? This column, sorry. This column need to be extracted, right? Then you need to extract this three and four, this orange color, right? Then you need to extract this 20, 21, 24, 40, 42, 44, right? And then last, right? You need to extract 44, 45, 54, 55. So that is a task. Can you all you guys try? Just create this array. So this is 0 to 5, 10, 11, 15, 20, in that manner, right? So this is a two dimensional array, right? So, uh, guys, all of you tried to create this one, this array? So, once we created this array, can you share your code to the chat box? Can you share the code to create this? array or can you share that single line right np dot array of need to create this one right zero one two three four five that one so anyone complete that just send your code to the chat box so so how to create this one? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After that, starting 10, right? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then there is no 16, 17, right? Then 20, 21, 22. Okay, this very, right? So we need to create manually with the help of MK. Uh, they, it will not work because it is not a range function because it is not continuous, right? After five, there is no six, seven, eight, right? After five, there is, so we need to create manually or we need to use, uh, there is another, uh, there are functions to join, right? Uh, join, split, there are functions are there, no? You, need to, you can try out. Here now just create array, direct array. We'll show you how to create this one. Okay, we can it. Okay, so I just name it some matrix. Matrix equal to np dot array. Need to no. Uh, it is two dimensional array, right? So starting from zero to five, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? 
after that starting from 10 right 10 11 so in this manner we need to create because it's not continuous after that starting 20 so 20 21 22 23 24 25 right then it started with 30 And in that manner, we need to create the entire array. After that, it will start with 40, right? 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, right? Then, last one is, last row is 50, right? 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Okay. So, that is our matrix. Right, this is our matrix, right? 0 to 5, 10 to 15, 20 to 25, 30 to 35, 40 to 45, 50 to 55. So I hope all of you, I just share this code here to anyone. Okay, then next, this is we created our matrix uh, called matrix. That is, we've done our first task, right? Then this new, you guys need to do that is out extra third column only so if you're done please send your code to the chat box you need to extra the third column so what will be answered it's, direct, it's very direct answer is there right then Radesh, uh, yes it, it can be done right it, can, there is a stack, B stack, H stack, horizontal stack, vertical stack. In that manner, there is option called uh, uh, that is num array merging. Okay, so if you are creating different array, right, then you can merge to form one array. In that manner, it will be created. Okay, so for this, this is a simple example. For that, no, let's uh, just type it directly. Okay, there is option for merging different arrays. If you have different arrays, you can merge to single arrays. Okay. So how you get the answer? So can you get the answer of second question? Or text the third column? This 2, 12, 22, 32, 42, 50. This third column, right? How to extract one? So just copy this in their thing. Uh, so the okay this is our question right so this is our question uh, we created the matrix we need to extra third column right so how to get the third column so simply we can use matrix colon we need all rows that is all rows and second index right that is third column is second index, right? So that man. So we will get the answer, right? So to get the three and four, you need to get this three and four. That is the third question. Yes, they yeah, that's the answer. So if you get the all answer, you can directly type answer to chat box. Okay. So the second question is to get three four, right? So how to get three four? Pretty easy, I think. Okay, that is the first column, column, right? Value is first column, so start with zero, and we need values third to fifth index, right? This is third index. We need three and four, right? So three to fifth index means so five is excluded, right? That means we use column three to five. Three to five means uh, fifth index is excluded, right? So this is the uh, right index starts from zero one that manner, right? Okay, that's the answer. And uh, and next question is 
uh, this thing, right? You need to select 20 after 20, get 22, then 24, then 40, 42, 44. In that manner, you need to select. Okay, 20, then 22, right? Then uh, 24, then 40, 42, 44. They are actually the zeroth index, right? We need matrix of zero, you know, three is to five, right? So how we have to go again, going to get this one, 20, 22, 24, any idea? We need to step thing also, let me show you. Uh, that is here, right? We have to 20, we need to get 22, uh, then 24, right? And then up, then third 40, right? 40, 42, 44. In that one, right? So that is index. This is the index. Um, matrix. This is index uh, two, right? Two. The 40 is coming from uh, fifth index, right? So zero, one, two. So index uh, column, uh, sorry, row two and row four is needed, right? So we can use row column two, row five with a step two. Okay, so it will select second row and same case in column. Uh, zeroth column is needed. Then we need the second column needed. Then fourth column, right? So we can use this one. Zero to five. Then step two. That is a uh, big skip. Uh, one uh, column right that is a step case and third one is step that is from zero to column to fifth column we are stepping two that is after zero we are picking the second uh, second index column okay in that manner after second index column we, we are picking the fourth index column in that manner that is a step function right step two so we are you know we're using this we can get this one right and this is uh, Straight forward, right? To get 10, 11, 13, 14. Last task is, uh, sorry, no, 10, 4. Last task is this one, right? 44, 45, 54, 55, right? So in order to get that one, this matrix, 4 is 2, comma, 4 is 2. That is from 4, we need all starting from fourth row we need all first of the things that is we are not giving any end limiter here so rest of the things same starting from fourth column then rest of the things we are not giving any end limiter or any step here in that manner so so this is the question and this is the answer I'll share the question to chat box if there are any confusion. So we need to extract this thing, right? Uh, I hope you understood the thing, right? Answers, right? If you have any uh, questions related to these answers, you can ask directly. Is it clear, right? If it is clear, please type yes. Then we can move to one more question. Then we can end the session. Then, then coming Saturday, we are starting the uh, Python and data science side, right? Uh, sorry, uh, we're starting with num uh, other packages that is pandas and matplotlib, right? We are more focused to pandas and pandas in coming sessions. In coming next Saturday, we're starting. It is clear, right? This number, uh, this task, right? So I just show another task for you guys. So this is a task here. So, so we have a data set of student. So this data set have names and marks in different subjects, right? So first of all, you need to create a matrix, a number array based on this. That is, uh, we need to create a number array having 
the two dimension number are having one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows and five columns. Having values 55, 80, 12, like that, right? So we need to create this uh, number arrays and there is some statistical question is given, right? So we need to get the maximum marks scored in subject C, right? And uh, we need to get the average marks scored in subject E in that manner. First of all, we need to create uh, this thing. If it's possible to share the image, that works. So just create this one, uh, this uh, number. First of all, just create this number array, as I did for task one, right? Same manner, you can create this number array also. That is number np dot array of, uh, then fifty five eighty in that manner. Once you created, please send that to chat box. Please send that code to chat box. Then now we can do these operations. Now, after completing it, we can wrap off the session, today's session. So let me know when you complete this one. Uh, first, like 55, 80, 12, first, first row is 55, 80, 12, 55, 88. Second row, 98, 95, 94, 95, 99, right? Third row, 8, 18. So this is the marks of different students in each subject, right? There are five subjects that they want, sub A, sub B, sub C, like that. And these are marks students. Anyone created the share a code? I'm just looking to this. Chat box for that now. Again, then creating the matrix, you can unmute and speak also, right? Uh, if you've done it, you can unmute and speak. Done, guys. Are you doing right? Uh, I need some acknowledgement to the chat box. If you're doing, please type yes. Guys? And I need to do right 55, 80, 12, 55, 88. This is the first row. So I just could now create this matrix. Yeah. Student uh, 55, 80, 12, 55, 88, right? So np dot RA. We need to create this matrix. 55, 80, 12, 55, 88. Then we need to create a second row. 98, 90, 98, 95, 94, 95, 99. 98, 95, 94, 95, 99. Right? That's correct. So then eight, eighteen, five, twelve, five, eight, eighteen, five, twelve, twelve, fifteen. Yes, fifteen. That is the third row, and the fourth row is fifty-two, forty-six, eighty-nine, eighty-nine, ninety. So first we create fifty-two, forty-six. 89, 
So we created the fourth and fifth is 9900, 8500, 99. 9900, 8599. And the last column is, column, uh, sorry, last row is 87, 44, 55, 87, 44, 55, 78, 88, 55, 78, 88. I think that's done. Thanks to me. So this is sorry, right? Correct, right? 55, 80, 12, 55, right? Yeah. So the first, second question is how to get the maximum mass code in subject C. So you need to get this. So I will share the question. Anyone want to? Share the metrics also. So this is the array, and these are the questions. Right. So first, so how to get maximum marks in subject C? So subject C is your uh, third column. That is index two, right? So to get the maximum marks, so what I need to do is uh, I need to do get np max, it, the max statistical function, right? Then our array student, right? Then the second column, right? So all rows and second column. So the maximum marks in subject uh, C, that is second column index second right uh, third column and index is two right that is 94 right we are getting the values 94 right so that is and the third question is how to get the average marks so for getting average marks we need to use uh, a function called mean right we already discussed in last class that max mean uh, mean is the to get the average so here yeah, that is for subject E. Subject E means the last subject, right? Last subject, right? So to get the mean, np dot mean of student of all columns. The last subject we can get using minus one. Okay? Index is minus one. We can use that also. That is eighty one point three two three. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh. So you guys try yourself, right? Okay, all of the question, right? I'm just doing here also. So next one is the average marks, right? So average marks, you need to use mean operation, mean to get average. So this is a statistical function to get the average. Okay. Along this, uh, yes, we are getting this uh, last column, right? Then we are finding the average me okay so the next question how to get the average mass scored by dennis that is your raw wise right dennis is just trying to get this 52 46 right then average i need average so dennis uh, it's fourth row that is index is three right so again it's an average mark so you need to use mean command mean method and student of index will be three, right? So index three or rows, uh, sorry, all columns, right? So that is average is 50, 75. So next question is, so how to get a topper in class? So we need to find who scored maximum marks in all subjects right so you know you need to do summation right then you need to find the top top uh, top marks right so there is a function called arg mass arg max okay it will get the index that is the index is zero represent uh previn right in case of column sorry in case of rows zero throw is previn's and one throw is vidya in that manner so we can 
get the index if you get the index as uh, 5 and it is bharati right so we need to uh, get uh, the summation of each subject right total marks of each subject then you need to find this arg max using this arg max we can get the index right if index value is 0 that is praveen index value is 1 is uh, vidya that we can use arg max so first of all uh, to get the topper you need to add uh, marks in each subject right across this uh, uh, which axis you need to add across the axis one across the column one right so i just to get the marks in each subject okay we need to use np dot sum right sum of student to summation of sum of student axis um, equal to one so what will happens is that we want to just save this to new array is equal to okay so we can use this single thing uh, or we can directly use that is we sum across marks across this uh, uh, axis one axis one is across the columns right then we will get the sum sum uh, summation of you know, uh, that is total marks of each student that is first student got 2290 second student 481 third student 63 68 in that manner so from this we can induce that uh, fourth student that is uh, fourth index that is fifth student getting the maximum mark right so you know, to get that index right we can use np dot arg max arg max of s right so we are getting index as four the fourth index is who is fourth index index four means this sundar right so sundar is the topper in the class that we can derive right so we can comment that here sundar is topper right that is why that is the way we, we can get the topper okay same thing now uh, simply you can use the who scored the subject b who how to get the person who scored maximum marks in subject b again you need to use arg max to get the person that is to get the index this person now you need to use arg max so that is you know, now you can do by yourself okay it's clear right uh, up to this uh, this example is clear right i just show you some of uh, use cases uh, with that of some uh, statistical functions same things there are other statistical functions right uh, variance to find the variance to find the standard deviation there are functions like that right i just show you one use case example here that's all right so that's all for today's class uh, if you have any doubts related to this two tasks you can ask if you have any doubts you can ask uh, is there is any doubts? It's clear, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I need some more yeses. If it's very appreciated, it's really appreciated if you are, you know, do some interactive things here, right? Yes. Okay. So that's all for today's session. Uh, we are uh, next section. We are taking pandas, pandas package. Okay, in coming uh, at the same session, we are taking that one. Okay, pandas is there and matplotlib is there. Then there is a mini project for you guys for doing that, right? Okay. So that's all from my side. Uh, Sundar sir. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Niyas sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Any participant have any question now? Okay, okay. We will share the PPT. Okay. okay. I will so share this Jupyter of, note uh, also. Okay, we, I I will share this Jupyter notebook for you guys. Okay, okay. then you can no, use the same Jupyter notebook for doing these things, right? I will share this Jupyter notebook with you. Okay. Okay. So okay. I will forward it to you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Nia, sir, thank you for sharing the wonderful thoughts yeah. on the MB package. Okay, and I would like to thanks to all the participants once again for your active participant.
we will meet the soon on the next saturday with uh, the different topics okay so thank you thank you all of you thank you thank you all of you for your time okay